All right. Well, I'm here today with Mandy Penny. Thank you for coming in and having some time with us today. You're very welcome. Glad hey, to be here. Well, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do? I am a licensed professional counselor. I work typically with women who are struggling with anxiety and depression. I have another counselor that works with me, and she does everything else. <laughs> she works with children, uh, teenagers. Um, she does some couples counseling, and I've been doing that six, seven years, maybe. Wow. And before that, I was a school counselor. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. We thought we'd come in today and just talk a little bit about the area of like you know mental health. I think now it used to be people didn't talk so much about it. Right. It was not a very common conversation that people would have. But now um, it's it's more open. I think people are talking about this much more, which they should. Right. I just thought it'd be great to bring you on and ask some questions. You know, my staff seems to think maybe I need some help. You can help me <laughs> in this process. I don't know. Maybe we could talk a little about mental health and about maybe some things that people might be going through right now. I know people, man, they're probably some people stressed, mm-hmm. probably have anxiety. Mm-hmm. If their kids are at home, I know they have anxiety and stress. <laughs> but outside of that, just because the the removal of everything that was normal for a while, right now it's it's just so different. Um, mm-hmm. To people who maybe are thinking thoughts like, man, why am I so stressed? Why do I have anxiety all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. I've never had this, but now all of a sudden I do. What's it like when you get off of what is normal and you're thrown into circumstances that are just completely out of your control? Well, you said something I think is key, and you mentioned control. And this is something that's completely out of our control. And a lot of times the anxiety increases as our control levels decrease yeah. you know and a big question that everybody's got is when's it going to end what's next what's going on all the what ifs mm-hmm. and that definitely adds to anxiety um i think a really important thing for us to remember is that this did not take god by surprise mm-hmm. and with everything that's going on he's watching over us yeah our world's turned upside down. Everything we know is inside out, backwards, turn around. And, yeah. and so, um, you know, one thing to remember is there's no right way to do this. Mm-hmm. We see um, all the social media feeds and there's some great stuff. There's some funny stuff. You know, there's some encouraging stuff. <laughs> but there's also some stuff that is it, it causes insecurity because people might think, well, I'm not doing it that way. Am I doing it mm-hmm. wrong? Should I be doing that? Why am I not able to enjoy this time with my kids like she is? Things yeah. like that. And um, everybody's different. Everybody's handling it in a different way. And so there's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. I think that's cool. Like, no right way, no wrong way, because it is true. Like, Haley had said this before. She did a message, and she talked about this, that – um so when you scan social media, you have to always understand that the majority of what's on there, people are showing you their best days, absolutely, their best moments. Right. No one posts, I just got in a fight with my, well, some people do, but most <laughs> normal people, I should say, aren't going to post, hey, I got in this huge fight with my husband and my right. wife and spill all the beans of what just happened and how we're still fighting three days later. Yeah. But they usually put, oh, we had a honeymoon dinner again. We yeah. had our you know, birthday party for our kids and they did people post the best, right? right? If people find themselves comparing, um, comparing what they're doing at home with what someone else is doing at home. Doesn't that, as you said, that, that can create some anxiety there. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 One of my favorite phrases, and I've got it on a plaque on my wall in my office is grace over perfection. Hmm. And so a huge thing is to give yourself some grace. Yeah. Uh, recognize you're going to make mistakes. You're going to yell at the kids. You're going to burn dinner. You know, things are going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> there is no perfection right now. Mm. And if you're looking at the social media feeds and thinking it's there, it's not. It's all an illusion. Mm. It, I think people a lot of times will post that to help them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Because they can look back and they can see that the high, that, you know, you've heard people call it the highlights reel. Yeah, yeah. And and it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
where the trouble sneaks in is when you start comparing your actual life with their highlight reel. Mm. And so recognize that things aren't going to be perfect and roll with it. Yeah. And mess up, say I'm sorry, and love them the best you can. <laughs> There's so many filters yeah. on a camera. Yeah. Like it amazed me when I first started seeing things. I wasn't on social media very much before. And now yeah. I, as a pastor, I, right. I need to, to be able to talk to people. And, but I realized, I thought, wow, man, look at that image. That's amazing. How'd that guy, you know, how's his <laughs> hair like glisten like that? That's amazing. And I realized, wait a minute, there's filters on all right. this stuff. You can and make so, anything look good. You can make anything look good. And so many times if you're comparing, you're seeing things that have been filtered. You're seeing things that are the best. They've yeah. been touched up, photoshopped, whatever. And if you're not careful, you can make decisions on what you're going through and, and view it in somebody else's. Mm-hmm. What they're posting or, or, or portraying an image of, right? And you make decisions in your own, like you know, life, emotionally, uh-huh. mentally, and saying things like you just mentioned. Well, I'm not doing it right. Mm. Wow, they uh, their kids are already finished with all their schoolwork. You know, they're done for the year, and yeah. my kids like on page two, and we have thirty more to go. And so you could feel a little bit. I, I suspect right now, probably, I don't know how it is in every home, and I don't want to presume. But I do suspect probably a lot of moms right now might feel the pressure of being mom, teacher, mm-hmm. wife, mm-hmm. and trying to like, man, how do I navigate all this? I can't right. keep up. Yeah. Um, what would you say maybe to a mom that's feeling that right now? Like, I just don't think I can keep up with all of this. You don't have to keep up with all of it. Mm-hmm. You're probably putting a lot of pressure on yourself to be perfect and to get everything done. But you don't have to keep up with all of it you do the best you can the, there are no standards right now really <laughs> because we've never been here before yeah. we you know we try to do the best that we can to make the best choices for our kids sometimes that may not be getting all the work done it might be going for a walk or mm. you know just kind of hanging out on the front lawn playing badminton or something like that the work's still going to be there um <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dinner is not a bad thing. It's okay. You don't have to have a five-course meal every Mm -hmm. dinner. Do the best you can and realize that if you're doing it with a heart full of love and compassion, then it's good enough. Yeah. You know, right now, families, um, I don't know of a time in in anyone's lifetime that you know, is alive today that has mm-hmm. been through a season where they're in the home with their family as much as they are right, right. now. And so what is a, a beautiful thing on one hand, it could also be a bit of a stressful thing right? on yeah. the other. So yeah. maybe talk about that. How does, how does that play out for a family if they feel like, man, why am I so stressed with, these are the people I love. Right. Like, right. Why am I so stressed with them? Because you're not used to being around them all the stinking time. (laughs) Really, um, you know, I I had a feeling this might come up. Mm -hmm. And um, you love your family. You love your husband. You love your kids, typically. Yeah, And uh, (laughs) But you're not used to spending this much time together. Yeah. It's, for a lot of people, especially if you're an introvert, it's very difficult to be around people constantly. Um, it's really important to be able to have some space to yourself on a regular basis so you can kind of refuel. And I encourage that for the kids as well. Mm. Um, if you've got children that share rooms, which we did for many, many years, yeah. uh, if you can find a way for them to have their own space, even if it's just for 30 minutes a day, um, that's always good. It's when we are constantly around each other that we get kind of nitpicky mm-hmm. and the, the tension, it escalates. Um, don't be afraid to say, hey, I need to go for a walk or I'm going to go sit outside for a while. Take your time out. Yeah. Grown ups need time outs Grown too. Grown ups need time outs too. And, there's, <laughs> and you're saying that, that's really good because like, so, so people, they, they should probably take some time away and get out. Yeah. But so then people would probably, I imagine, feel a little guilty for like even saying that. Like, yeah. well, I need a time out. So it's nothing personal against others. Right. It's just you saying, I need to breathe. Take a right? breath. Yeah. Yeah. And that's some good time for you to connect with God, too. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so you can sit and listen and hear from him, which is probably what you need in the first place because a, a big thing, your, your mental health is so tied to your spiritual health. Yeah, absolutely. And you need that time with God. You need to be able to hear from him. You need to spend that time with him so that your mental health is is more level instead of the ups and downs and the highs and lows. Yeah. That's a good indicator if, if you're feeling stress or anxiety more so than even now than typical for you. Good time to check back in with God. Yeah. Yeah, and not and not make it such a <clears throat> a program thing either. Like mm-hmm. I think so many times it's overlooked. Uh, you mentioned about mental health and how close it's tied to spirituality. How often it is that it is overlooked. Like a devotion, there's nothing wrong with devotions. Mm-hmm. I love devotions, and I love books, and I love ministries and podcasts, and so you can hear all you want right now. Mm-hmm. But sometimes just to break away, you can gain just as much um, support, if you will, at times. If you just go out and just sit and listen yeah. at nature, yeah. there's a reason why God created that. Right. And um, so the the person who feels like, well, man, I need to go get another devotion, sometimes, and I'm not, as a pastor, I, I'm not going against devotion right. when I say this, but sometimes adding one more to do yes. to your life is just more pressure. Right. And maybe it's a lounge chair on the front lawn while the kids run around the you uh-huh. know, house uh-huh. and you can just watch them run around or whatever and they're fine. Uh-huh. You can just take a break and that might be good. I don't know, maybe yeah. something else. Um, yeah, that or a walk. A walk. Take a walk around the block. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I would say lock yourself in the bathroom, but the kids find you there. <laughs> they always find you. <laughs> they always find you. <laughs> but be creative. You know, God gave us imaginations to use. And uh, if you're struggling to find that space or that time, ask him to show you, you know, mm-hmm. even, and it might not be anything consistent. It might be a little spot here, a little spot there. Um, let your expectations go and just listen to what God says. What he's telling you. This season may feel a little bit like it does at Christmas. So at Christmas time, I know a lot of people get, um, it's not just stress and anxiety. Sometimes people get depressed about the situation they're in mm-hmm. and uh, a Christmas break, or maybe it's just family's not around. This isn't going on like they thought it would. Right. It reminds them of other seasons that weren't favorable or, or, or enjoyable. Um, if people are going through some seasons of, whether it may not even be depression, it just may be like, man, I feel tired or I feel yeah. exhausted. So, you know, if you do feel tired, if you do um, feel discouraged or frustrated, know that that's normal right now, I think. if I hate to use the word normal, but, <laughs> you know, it's not uncommon. Let's right. put it that way. Um, that can kind of creep over into depression. And a lot of people are uncomfortable using that word. Yeah. I think, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stigma attached to it. But um, things are so different right now that a lot of people don't know how to cope with it. Mm-hmm. And that's overwhelming. And um, that's a good time to reach out and ask for help or to talk with a friend or connect with your small group at church. Yeah. We often overlook the power and uh, so Dr. Um, Cloud says it like this. I read a lot of his different things. It mm-hmm. helps me tremendously. But never underestimate the power of the other. So the other person that, mm. man, there's always um, someone that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. And you need people. Like God Absolutely. did not intend for you to go through life alone. Yeah. And if you find yourself alone and isolated, then you, you kind of have to be brave. You mm-hmm. really do. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't just ask anybody right. anything. I wouldn't share just yeah. anything with anyone. But someone that you know you can trust and reach out and just say, hey, I'm struggling with some things right here. Mm-hmm. And I just want to talk through it with someone. Would you mind if I do that with Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because it's there's strength in just unloading that. Right. You know? Right. I can't tell you how many people walk out of my office just after one session and say, Whew. I feel better. I got all that off my chest and man, I really needed to talk about that. And, <laughs> and so and just to unload on somebody that is willing to listen with a compassionate heart, yeah. it makes a huge difference. It really does. And that listening side, that that's what I would also say if someone's watching right now, 
maybe you're not going through something. Maybe you're fine. Mm -hmm. But maybe someone wants to talk. Be willing to listen right now. You could be a really good friend to someone. You have any tips maybe on if, what if someone gets a call? Like, so someone's watching this and they feel, man, I I need to talk to somebody. So they pick up the phone, they make Mm -hmm. the call. Mm -hmm. What if they call someone and, and you're that person they call? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I can, sure, I'll talk with you. You have any tips maybe for oh, if wow. you're the person going to yeah. listen in right now? How would you? That's a good question. Listen well, maybe. Um, well, a huge one is let them say what they need to say. Um, let them feel what they need to feel. Hmm. You know, that's real important. Everybody feels differently, Yeah. you know. And typically, if somebody's going to reach out to you, it's somebody that they trust and you have something mm-hmm. in common. And so, you know, if you can empathize with them, if, you, if you're connecting with them, then let them know they're not alone in feeling that. Mm-hmm. Try not to make it about you, though, if, um, if they're calling and mm-hmm. they need to talk through their stuff. You can get to your stuff later. Yeah. Or you can reach out to somebody else because, you know, you got stuff going on too. Sure. But um, just be a good listener. Hmm. Let them feel heard. And That's give them a, a long distance hug the best you can. <laughs> long you <know>. distance hug. <laughs> you mentioned feeling alone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you may be around a lot of people and still feel alone. Mm. And that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. How can I feel alone when my whole family's around me, yeah. but it's an emotional disconnect. You, you may feel like they don't get what I'm going through or nobody is paying attention to what I'm doing or things like that. And it makes you feel alone mm. around people and to, to know that that's not uncommon mm-hmm. also. It's a normal feeling sometimes. Um, so don't feel weird about that. I shouldn't feel yeah. alone because I've got my family around me, but it happens sometimes. And I, and I say this with all due respect uh, for our faith as Christians, mm-hmm. but that is part of the reason why I think people struggle in Christianity to try to figure out, well, as a Christian, I'm supposed to be strong. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have faith. I'm supposed to not be afraid. Like Pastor Joe just preached on this, all this stuff. So I shouldn't be all these things, but... Not understanding that when when we preach these things, as we're sharing them, we're preaching from a standpoint of we're also saying, don't be alone, have a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, you do need community, and that makes it hard right now. Right. So isolation does bring about loneliness. Absolutely. Even if you are in a house filled with people. Yeah, yeah. But how you feel about things, I think so many times it's downplayed. In Christianity, like Mm -hmm. we shouldn't talk about how we feel because we're people of faith. But the reality is, I mean, yeah, I'm a person of faith. I got feelings. Right. And I I enjoy what you you said that people feel differently about the same circumstance. Mm -hmm. So you and I have totally two different emotions, maybe about the same event that took place. Maybe could you share a little bit about to encourage someone today, what if they're, if they're listening and say, yeah, but you know, I don't feel scared or anxiety or fear. I feel anger. Like I'm right. mad. Yeah. I've lost income. I've lost this. I feel like people are, what about somebody's angry right now? That's a really you know, good point. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are angry. Um, many, many people have had things taken away from them because of yeah. this. And um, anger is a very, very normal response right now. Um, once again, I use that word normal, but <laughs> this uh, may be the new normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angry. Happy, right. You know, and all. <laughs> right. Go to your, your people, find a person you trust and talk through that. If it, you know, if it's to a point to where you're finding that there is some physical stuff going on within your mm-hmm. family, it's real important to reach out to somebody professional that can help you with that. Absolutely. I know that from reports and things that we're getting that um, there are cases where people do because of anger issues and whatnot that domestic violence and things have actually kind of gone up. Right, right. And so when you say, hey, look, get professional help, if someone is listening, and let's just say right now their only safe space is social media. Mm-hmm. Let's say maybe they're listening and they don't know 
what to do, where to go, or how even do I even start that process? I'm mm-hmm. I'm in trouble and don't know what to do. Whether they are um, the offender or the one being offended right. in the situation, right. what would you? What could they do to reach out? Once again, figure out who your safe people are, whoever that might be, a personal friend, your church, a professional. Mm -hmm. um, Get in contact with them, and they will point you in the direction of resources that will um, help you. Yeah. There's a domestic violence shelter here. Um, DFAX helps with uh, child abuse cases, Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure they're working overtime both cases yeah so that's not normal maybe to even say you know we're talking about things it, well I hope when things get back to normal mm-hmm. but what's not normal is that that's right you, it's one thing to be angry it's one thing to right. like the bible says be angry and sin not exactly. you can be angry and yeah. mad i've been mad sure. in the last couple of weeks i've been angry about some stuff but what's not normal is people getting hurt in, uh, in this absolutely. season that's not normal no Getting hurt is never normal. That's not normal. Being hurt, having hands hurt you intentionally or even not intentionally, if it's in anger, Mm -hmm. is not normal. Right. That is a time to reach out for help, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're watching and you need that, like you can call our church offices or uh, we'll post some of the things up for you. But we we just want people to be aware of that because we've heard that in our community that this is on the uprise and... Mm want to make sure that's available uh, to everyone as well as they're mm-hmm. listening. You know, we've talked a little bit about for parents and some other issues that we've covered. Um, what if we covered a little bit about with kids? They may be struggling through school. Like there's a lot going on with school and the homework, classwork. And, mm-hmm. you know, can a child have stress? Absolutely. And Even and, under the best of circumstances. So, and then what would that look like? Maybe help parents out if a child yeah. is stressed. What might it show up like? Because it might be different right, than right. for us. You know? Um, you know, some kids might withdraw. Some kids might get frustrated and mm. get more aggressive. Mm. Um, some kids might be more verbal. Mm. Some kids might shut down. You know, you know your children better yeah. than anyone, but... They're all going to have a reaction to this, just like we as adults do. Yeah. Uh, and it might not be pretty, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not unusual. Their their world has really been turned upside down. Sure has. Uh, I'm sure it was real exciting at first to <laughs> get a couple of weeks off of school. Yeah, we're and, out of school. Yeah. yeah. And then it pushed into three and four. Yeah. Now I think a lot of kids want to go back because yeah. they miss their friends. And that's another aspect of it. Um, I know some parents are doing Zoom play dates, Mm -hmm. so that's good to keep your kids connected, even if it's something like that, Um, or phone calls or FaceTimes or things uh, like that. Use technology in a good way because, you know, it it can be good. As far as the schoolwork goes, gauge what your child's tolerance is because Mm -hmm. it's difficult not only for you as a parent to try and do what you're doing, but it's also difficult for the children because if you are trying to teach them in a way that's different than their teacher, which is a lot of what's going on right now, especially in the math world, uh, doesn't mean that one way is better or worse than the other. It's just different, but kids sometimes have a hard time with different. Mm -hmm. And so try your best to have patience with that with your child. I encourage you to, uh, you know, if they're getting frustrated, take a time out. Yeah. Take a break. You don't have to do everything at once. Uh, Get up, go have a snack, go walk around the house, get outside, get some sunshine. We've had some beautiful weather lately. Yes, this has been amazing. So grateful for this weather. Go outside, play a game, let the kids run around. Um, If you find that they're getting really antsy or anxious or frustrated, that is a good time for them to go outside and burn off some energy. Yeah. Gives you some time too. Mm-hmm. But going back to um, don't try and be perfect because you can't. Mm-hmm. Don't expect your kids to be perfect because they won't. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. And I think that <clears throat> from a child's perspective and, and thinking about this, you know, they, they're going through that. Like you mentioned, they're going through the same thing we're going through. Right. Their reactions may come out differently. 
but they're feeling the same pressure and mm-hmm. stress and anxiety. And maybe that's why they're eating so much more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. Maybe that's why they're going through so much food. I, I don't know. But but nonetheless, they're they're dealing with it in their own way. Right. And it is different. I mean, their friends are gone. Mm-hmm. They've, in a sense, lost a lot as well. And I think yes. a loss is a loss. You know, I've never been through a situation like this with my kids and what they feel like. But it, mm-hmm. I can still be empathetic and say, you know what? They've lost things too. Right. And a loss is a loss, even if it seems small. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss it doesn't. book, doesn't it? A loss <laughs> is a loss, no matter how big, no matter how small. <laughs> but nonetheless, they have loss right. as well. And that causes reactions. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. So um, It's good to sit down with them and ask them what they're feeling. Hmm. They may not know. And so that could be a good conversation for you to help them identify some feelings, if that's not, you know, vocabulary that they're familiar with. Um hmm. Some some kids aren't going to know. They just know they don't feel right. Yeah. Because things are different. And I explain to them that's okay. Even mm-hmm. the grown-ups are feeling that right now. But we're doing everything we can to make sure everybody stays safe and healthy. Yeah. And you're protected and we love you. Mm-hmm. And that will never change. If our kids need something, sometimes they don't get as much. Um, right. One-on-one time, if you will, like, hey, look, how are you feeling through all this? Haven't yeah. really. You know, other people have asked those individuals, my friends, et cetera, but how are you feeling? How are you coping with this? And especially with the school, I think the pressure of that, like, you know, you mentioned that. I think for us, I I can only imagine there's other people like us that's out there. I doubt I'm the only one and you're the only one. I know there are other people yeah. out there that are feeling the pressure of trying to be a parent, homeschool teacher, you know, whatever all that looks like now. But you're trying to accomplish all this and make sure your kid achieves and gets through the grade the right way and everything else. But the reality is um, when you mention the word perfect, you, you just, you can only do so much. Right. Especially if you're in a two parent home where uh, both parents are working. Mm -hmm. If you're not able to stay at home, Mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to be able to do all that. Right. And And imagine a one parent home. Yeah. Somebody's working. And I love what you said. Give yourself some grace and maybe tell your students or tell your children, that, you know, hey, baby, I'm, I, we're just in this together, like you said. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm having to do this and you're having to do that. We'll make it through it together, but mm-hmm. let's just um, not stress out over it and try to do what we can do. Right. Like you said, walks and get out and get some fresh air and... Mm-hmm. You know, maybe pick up a phone and call the teacher or right. the school and tell them what's going on. Yeah. Even might be a good idea. Well, Mandy, uh, thanks for um, sharing all these things with me today. And, and I know it's going to bless a lot of people. I know people are going to um, get a lot from this. And I pray that it helps people understand that they can uh, struggle and it's okay. Yes. And that um, they don't have to be perfect. Give themselves some grace. Yeah. And then I also want to make opportunity available. So if, if someone is out there and they need... Um, to get in touch with someone, a licensed prof- professional counselor, um, you know, you have an open door and, Absolutely. you know, they could come and, and talk to you. And if they want to get in touch with you and set up an appointment, how could they do that? The best way to get a hold of me is our website, and that is www.abundantlivingrome.com. Okay. Um, there's an, uh, an option to submit an appointment request, but you don't have to request an appointment with okay. that. It's just a, a great way to get in touch with me so I can reach back out to you. And, you know, if you're not comfortable um, getting in touch with me because you know me personally through the church, mm-hmm. I can definitely get you in touch with other resources, other That's therapists cool. in town. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming by and, so and spending some time to. with us. And as we do our social distancing here, and uh, it's I nice appreciate to see a face. Isn't it. Though? <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to see a face, you know. Well, thanks for coming by. We appreciate sure this. Appreciate it, Jody.